System defaults are a convenience, but they're rarely the most secure starting point. So having a security baseline for each category of device is an important start. Now, there are many resources regarding security baselines and best practices for hardening a system. Hardening means it's making it tougher for that device to be compromised. So what I'd like to do is let's take a look at a few of those resources together. One of the resources for hardening our systems and having a security baseline is from the vendor that makes most of the desktop operating systems that are in use on the planet today. And that is Microsoft regarding Microsoft Windows. So there's plenty of documentation and help from the vendors themselves regarding what we should do and how we should set it up and then using security baselines in our organizations. And for Windows systems that are integrated as part of Active Directory, we can control many of these settings and permissions, including registry settings using group policy. So the process of hardening involves identifying any unneeded accounts or services or listening ports and effectively deactivating or disabling anything that's not needed. Hence, there's no longer a potential attack vector or vulnerability on the system if that service or that account is completely disabled or removed. Now, besides end workstations and nodes on our networks that might be running Windows, we have a lot of other devices, including network infrastructure devices. So next, together, let's take a look at another resource regarding hardening network devices, and this one is from Cisco Systems. So this hardening guide is from Cisco Systems, and it's appropriate for their gear, and it is document 13608, and it talks about what we can do to harden or help protect those devices regarding the data plane, that's where data is being forwarded through those devices, the control plane, which is, represents how those devices learn how to forward, as well as the management plane, which is what we use to manage the devices and allow the devices to communicate with each other and controllers as part of our overall system. And if we scroll down a little bit, here it talks about the management plane, and a little bit further, there's the control plane, and then a little bit further, the data plane. So there's a lot of options here, and we don't have to use every single option that's provided from a vendor as far as a best practice or a concept regarding hardening. But what we should do is take devices that we are using and then take what the vendor is presenting and then consider that. If we see a very good technique like, oh my gosh, we can be lied to about you know ARP information, or we can be lied to or have rogue DHCP servers, we would then want to use those techniques of protecting against those types of attacks in our environment as they apply. And they can become part of our baseline for secure infrastructure. And as one other example, let's take a look at what the National Security Agency provides us as well regarding hardening. And I just did a search for NSA and Security Configuration Guideline. And the goal is to provide us with the best possible security options for the most widely used products. And it says the NSA does not favor or promote any specific vendor product over another one. So if we scroll down in this list, we have information on industrial control systems or ICS, applications, operating systems, and so forth. Another concern is that if we have mobile devices with sensitive data on them and those devices are stolen, what's our risk? So to help protect that data, if it's lost or stolen, we can use disk encryption. And full disk encryption or FDE can protect that information if that mobile device is lost or stolen. So encryption could also be used, or at least required, for companies that are allowing BYOD, which is bring your own device. Also, when possible, it'd be awesome to allow remote wipe capability. And that way, if a device is reported as missing, it can be remotely wiped, and thereby protecting any data on that system from falling into the hands of an unauthorized individual. Now, there are a few options for encrypting a storage device. Options include self-encrypting drives, or also called SEDs for self-encrypting drives. And a common term for encrypting the entire disk is called full disk encryption, or FDE. And one standard for self-encrypting drives is the OPAL, O-P-A-L, storage specification. And here at the website for the Trusted Computing Group, they've got details on this specification. And if we click over here, right as of this recording, it says the current latest version is 2.01 revision 1.0. If we click on that, that brings it up to a PDF. Let me make that a little bit bigger. And here it provides an overview and some of the benefits. At the end of the day, it provides encryption for that drive. So that way, if the drive is taken or the whole mobile device or laptop is stolen, the unauthenticated user won't have the keys to unlock the contents of that drive and won't be able to make sense of it. Another consideration to maintain a secure device is to verify that the operating system that's running 
is using the latest tested and verified hot fixes and patches, especially if those are security related hot fixes or patches. So a well-designed patch management program or update program is going to include testing a proposed patch or an update for functionality and security in a test environment before rolling it into production. So change control is going to play a big part in this, including confirming the testing procedures and also verifying that the tests have been done, also communicating the update to the people and systems that it's going to impact. And that's all going to be done before rolling out any new software. We should also run hashes and we should generate those and check those against the vendor just to make sure that the hash we generate matches the hash the vendor published. And that way we can verify that this software update we're about to go ahead and implement is literally the same software update that's been published by the manufacturer because the hashes match. And here's a reinforcement of how to do that. In a previous set of videos, we downloaded a Kali Linux image and I want to verify that it really matched the hash value that was published by the vendor. So I have this file, if you do a DAR, I've got this Kali Linux image in my D drive and it's showing here on the website that this is the actual hash value for it, 5049, et cetera, et cetera. So what we could do is looking at this value, we could generate our own hash. In this case, we have SHA-256 hash and then compare the values. So to do that here, we'll use the cert util dash hash file and the name of the file, which is Kali Linux. I'll tab it out and then we'll do a SHA and it's 256. So I'll put SHA-256, press enter, and that's going to create the little digest or hash based on that source file. And so what I do is compare the one I'm about to generate with the one that was published. If they match, I've got data integrity. I'm looking at exactly the same file. All right, and there it is. I'm just going to look at the last few characters, 88FB02, 88FB02. And the whole thing matches, which is great, because if there was one bit that was different in this file that I did the hash against, the entire hash would be completely different. And if there are third-party updates, or if we have auto-update features enabled, steps need to be taken to periodically validate that those updates, before they go into production, are not going to cause us harm. And we do that with hashing algorithms to verify the data integrity, and also making sure that those are all tested before they go into production. Now, we can also improve or maintain our security posture over time by doing vulnerability scans, reviewing accounts and services, and running applications. And as we discover unused accounts or services that aren't needed, we can remove or disable those and then update our baselines. That way future systems can benefit from the additional hardening that we're providing. And in the next video, I'd like to chat with you about what we can do or methods that can be used to verify the integrity of a system as it boots, just to make sure that nothing fishy has happened in that boot process. And so we'll do that in the next video and I'll see you there in just a moment. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.